Hi, James. Uh, all Formula One cars are said to be built around uh, some basic principle. So, the principle about this F15T, uh, wasn't it just uh, to amend the errors of last year, or uh, could we see some uh, innovation in the, in the project? I think um, all Formula One cars every year, they're trying to do the, more or less the same thing. Uh, put as much power down on the road as possible, so that means not just to have a high level of power, but make that power uh, deliverable by the driver in a nice controllable way to have a high level of downforce um, but again not just absolute peak downforce being being well well uh, optimized but but across the range of conditions that the car will see on the track in corners high winds low winds um, and in straight lines so making making that aerodynamic package deliver performance in a range of conditions and then uh, a uh, suspension characteristic that allows, um, allows the right compromise between the suppleness of the suspension over the road and the support of the aerodynamic platform on top so that you can deliver high downforce to the car but without having the tyres skip across the surface of the road. So those are the things that you work on every year and in particular compared with last year where we, we clearly had an unacceptably large uh, gap in our performance, we've tried to make sure that the weaknesses that we, we felt were particularly notable on the uh, 14 car were, were put right for the 15 car. Overall the car looks uh, uh, more slender and uh, you know, maybe longer compared to last year's car. Is it just a result of uh, the new set regulation concerning the nose section or is it is also a consequence of some repackaging you, you've done all around the car? I think all the cars on the grid this year are going to be more appealing uh, around the front, around the nose, because after a few years of trying, I think we finally invented a regulation that gets uh, what we wanted from a safety point of view, but also doesn't uh, create the rather unappealing features of the last few years. So I think everyone will look a, a lot prettier at the front and, and the uh, 2015 Ferrari is, uh, I think, uh, nice in that regard. However, the back of the car is something that uh, is noticeably different from the 2014 car, uh, where we have been successful in pulling the bodywork much tighter, much tighter to all the stuff underneath the skin. Um, and that's been done uh, through a lot of uh, work, not just in the wind tunnel, but also in the, uh, in the, uh, the design part of the company to try and find radiator designs that were fundamentally more efficient though. So for every square centimeter of radiator, we are able to extract more cooling this year than last and therefore able to close the car down at the back as a consequence. The SF15T car retains the pull rod the suspension scheme all around and that's probably going to raise a few eyebrows from people who expect something new in the area. Uh, what's your answer to this? Every year you, uh, you set out which areas of the car you think you should put your effort into to try and improve them. And these are decisions that need to be taken quite carefully because when you make a choice of working on one part of the car because you don't have infinite resources, you're effectively making a choice not to work on another part of the car. So when you decide what to work on, you have to pick quite carefully the things that you think are gonna bring you the maximum amount of return for your effort. And push rod, pull rod on the front, it has pros and cons either side. A pull rod is probably harder to uh, get light and stiff, but it's probably a bit easier to get an aerodynamic uh, performance from it. So it's, it swings and roundabouts, and it was an area of the car that was uh, something that wasn't felt to be a problem on last year's car, and therefore not an area that really merited uh, investment of, of effort in this time round on the SF15T. Of course, much of the work has been around the power unit as well. So can you just uh, uh give uh, some uh, outlines, basic outlines of what has been done around the car. Power unit has, along with the rest of the car, been, been an area of uh, extremely high, high effort to improve. Um, 
we had a number of a number of issues uh, with last year's engine and power unit. Uh, Early on in the season, the power delivery was not particularly sophisticated, and it was quite tough for the drivers to to get the type of throttle response that they that they wanted. It was improved a lot during the season, and uh, and we take that a step further for the SF fifteen T. A definite weakness of last year's car was that the amount of electrical energy that we were able to recover from the turbo was not really good enough um, for producing competitive power levels during the race. One of the reasons why Ferrari's qualifying performance was relatively stronger compared with their race performance last year. So that's an area that we've tried to change the architecture of the engine to, to make it a better compromise between qualifying and racing uh, performance. And then plain simple horsepower. Um, enormous amounts of work uh, gone into all aspects of our combustion efficiency to try to make sure that in this fuel limited formula where every team is only allowed to burn the same amount of fuel, that every single compression stroke, every single ignition stroke is extracting the maximum amount of horsepower and putting it on the road. Again, talking about power unit, uh, do you see uh, an advantage in the, the new rule which Ferrari has endorsed, which allow any team to use up uh, the tokens uh, all through the year instead of just freezing the, developing the engine uh, at the end of February as used to be last year? When you're coming from a position like we are uh, of attempting to recover a gap in performance uh, between our car and some of the opposition, it's quite galling to have an idea for how you might improve your, your car, but to not be able to do so because the regulations would freeze a certain part of that design for a whole season at a time. And it's frustrating to sit there looking at something on the shelf that you know could deliver you more performance. So finding ourselves as we are, coming, uh, recovering performance, trying to eat into the lead demonstrated last year by our opposition, it's good to have the flexibility that we will enjoy in 2015 to keep that development program going during the year to allow us, if we do a good job, um, to, to develop stronger and faster than we would do otherwise. Of course, that opportunity is open to every person, every team competing uh, next year. Um, but the fun of Formula One is that the challenge is not supposed to be easy, but it's nice to have the opportunity to try to bring what we can do to the track and see if we can close that gap. And finally, I understand cars have been made like 10 kilos heavier this year. Uh, did that create an issue to you or rather uh, it was ease off your job as uh, those cars are known to be quite close to the weight limit? The rules that were introduced in 2014 are a lot harder to stay under the weight limit than the rules that we had prior to 2014. All teams have got fairly used to the luxury of, of uh, many, many, many kilograms of ballast which they could put low down in the car and position for optimum performance. 2014 was much tougher in that regard and a recognition of that fact um, by the teams and by the FIA during the 2014 season led to us all agreeing for an increase in weight of the cars by 10 kilos for 2015. 10 kilos, which was then subsequently raised to 11 kilograms, um, owing to a detail in the weight difference between the tires. So 11 kilos more in 2015 than 14. And that, that weight difference allows pretty much everyone on the grid to have a sensible level of ballast, a sensible level meaning that they will be able to move the center of gravity of their car from the front limit allowed under the regulations to the back limit allowed under the regulations um, without the car being overweight.